Now let's get into the fun part and get some ideas going on in our brains. First, we will learn about some mini challenges and ways to get students to start thinking like a designer. These activities can be used within any age group and adapted as needed. First is an activity called 30 circles. You can have students do this by themselves or in a group. Provide participants with a piece of paper with 30 blank circles on it of the same size. They will have three minutes to turn as many of the circles into recognizable objects. Have students compare their results. How many filled in 10, 15, or more circles? Most don't fill up all 30. Did many draw the same ideas? Did some think out of the box? Did some go against the grain and combine circles? This activity creates a sense of flow for ideas and flexibility of using your imagination to come up with ideas. Another activity is called I Learn and I Teach. Have students think of one thing that they know how to do that they can teach to someone else in five minutes or less. Partner students up or have them choose a partner and give them each five minutes to teach the other person something they know how to do. When this activity is over, explain that this helps us to think and learn from another person's perspective and it builds empathy and teamwork. Mind mapping is the next activity. This is usually done individually but can be modeled to a whole group for understanding and clarification. Provide students with a large sheet of paper and a pencil. Have them start with a topic or idea in the middle of their paper. Let's try this one together. Pause the video and grab a piece of paper and a pencil. Our central topic choices are, how might we design our curriculum to be student-centered? Or, how might we connect with our communities in new ways? Choose one to write in the middle of your paper and begin branching out ideas from the middle. Some ideas may cluster together. Draw ovals around those. Work until you run out of ideas. When doing this with students, give them something fun to start with and set a time limit as our brains work best under pressure. When you are done, look for patterns and ideas that really speak to you and make you excited to do more thinking around those ideas with your students. These three activities can be done virtually with breakout rooms, as can the last activity I will share to help students build trust and empathy with each other. This activity is called, Tell Me More. Give each student a list of questions that are open-ended. For example, what is your favorite outdoor activity? Why do you like it so much? What would you do with a million dollars in a way that could help other people? What's one thing you know how to do really well? How do you know how to do this? Did someone teach you? You can also include questions that would relate to a topic that you will be teaching. Pair students up and give them three minutes with at least three other people to take turns asking each other questions during that time. Tell them when it's their turn to listen, they may not speak and they need to focus on listening to the answers that their partners give them. There are several mini design challenges and warm-up activities out there to support design thinking. These are just a few. Let us know if you try them and how it goes with your students. In preparing our students with skills they will need for the future, design thinking fosters habits of mind and promotes students to solve problems using multiple solutions. Design thinking can be used across content areas and fits in so well with STEAM and arts integration approaches to learning. This framework is used to facilitate rather than impart knowledge to students by developing critical thinking skills, creative confidence, pattern identification, and of course, empathy, which we all can benefit from to make this world a better place.